Why has it all come down to Idlib? Nine years of brutal fighting and civil war has left Syria in ruins. The last UN estimate in 2016 put the death toll at 400,000. Then they stopped counting. More than 9 million people are displaced. The numbers are staggering. And the worst, it's not over. The waning days of the Syrian conflict are playing out here in the country's northwest province, Idlib. The UN says more than 900,000 people have been displaced since the Assad regime launched an offensive in December 2019. The majority of those are women and children. The crisis really demands uh, immediate action from the Security Council, from member states around the world, uh, because this is a crisis now on a scale that we've not seen throughout the entire Syrian war. Um, you know, uh, this is the biggest single displacement uh, that we've seen uh, throughout the Syrian war. Um, uh, we've seen more than 1,700 civilians killed uh, in the last year. Uh, and those are just the numbers that have been verified, uh, documented and verified by the United Nations. To understand how we got here, we need to go back to September 2015. Up until this point, President Bashar al-Assad's regime had been losing ground, and ISIS had taken large swaths of land. Rebel groups were moving towards Damascus, but then Russia entered, bringing heavy firepower and a powerful air force. Slowly, Assad was able to claw his way back into the fight. The war fell into a vicious but effective pattern. The Assad regime would surround, besiege, gas, and bombard the rebel-held areas before making a deal for rebels and civilians to leave for Idlib. Many chose to take their chances in Idlib rather than risk the dangers of life under the Assad regime. Today, Idlib is the last so-called rebel stronghold in the country. Before the war, a million and a half people lived in the province. Now, more than three million people do. Many are on their second or third wave of displacement. With the Assad regime solidly in control of much of the rest of the country, the people of Idlib have nowhere to go. But that doesn't mean they're safe from the regime and its allies. There have been accusations of them bombing hospitals and schools, even civilian convoys. Turkey, who supports some of the few remaining rebels, already hosts three and a half million refugees and won't let any more in. It's created a humanitarian crisis of disastrous proportions. The war's end seems all but certain. The question is, how many more victims will it claim before it finally draws to a close?